very exciting. So how do we do it? It's a commitment to our students. It's a commitment to having the best facilities we can have. It's making sure we've got a uh, fantastic real estate. You've heard enough from me. Uh, I will come back to answer any questions you might have at the end. I hope you've really enjoyed it. But the most important thing when you come on these other days is to hear from people who've lived through it. Um, hopefully our ambassadors that you've seen around the place have given you a flavour. They've been, they've been good. Um, but uh, I'm going to hand over to, as you said, Richard Woods, who already mentioned, who is starring currently in The Apprentice. But most importantly from our point of view, is a successful ex-graduate of some 10 years. Richard, thank you. Thank you so much. That new building looks brilliant. And when I actually uh, asked the guys about it, I said, oh, we must be 2020 or really off. It's built. It's actually done. Um, we're going to have a look at it after this. So um, I was really surprised. It looked like it's great CGI or what might be. But it's actually done and it's going to be ready for you guys as well. So really cool. But anyway, so 14 years ago, I sat in these seats with my mum and my dad and my brother actually, uh, my brother was a similar age to me and we were looking at universities and uh, it, was, uh, it was one of these strange things, we went to Bath, we went to Bristol, we went down to the south coast, of, uh, to Bournemouth as well and uh, we had a look around and it was a really strange sort of experience because this was how I had to institute at the time and all the rest of the ones I just mentioned the universities and there was just something here that did it for me when I went around there and I just got that feeling and I'm a gut instinct person and walking around here, I've got a feeling. So I eventually said, yes, I'll do it. And uh, I'll apply to come to Southampton Institute, which obviously um, brought me on this story. Uh, but the, the, the thing for you guys is that um, it's a really great place. It's a really good university. And there's three things I want to talk to you about, uh, about why I feel it shaped how I got to where I am today, which is one is the relationships I built here and the people I met. Two, it's the non-academic side of Southampton so that made it so great for me and the, the leadership and the camaraderie that I got from that non-academic side. And then, of course, there's the course. And the course that I went on was a fascinating course, business entrepreneurship course, um, and I always knew that I wanted to set up my own business, so hence why I went down that road. So, to start off with, I came in and uh, decided to go here and got my, my box and went to Ikea and got all the stuff that you get from Ikea and... Mum and Dad took us up here, my brother came in as well. We went to Deanery. I don't know if you guys have uh, had a look at the halls yet, but Deanery was my halls. Block B, floor three, that's where we're at. And uh, I sort of got into my little room and uh, said goodbye to Mum. And she was like, oh, my boy. Oh, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bye, Mum. God, you're gone. This is embarrassing. <laughs> and, and we start talking to the guys that we have in halls. And uh, I go into the kitchen and I'm putting away all the stuff in the kitchen, trying to grab the best drawers and stuff. And uh, in walks this beautiful blonde girl, and I'm like, hello, how are you? My name is Richard. And anyway, she's sitting here still, right behind me, and Cara, I met my wife on the very first day of university here, and she's now pregnant with our second as well. So uh, it was one of those things that, guys, if a lovely girl walks into you on the first day, <laughs> do say hello. It's worthwhile. <laughs> so, um, so that's the first thing. So obviously, life, life relationships there. But also the, the, the mates, the lads that I met as well, um, were some really great guys. You know, half of them were the groomsmen at my wedding. Um, I lived with uh, half of them as well in the second and third years when you get your houses. Um, one of them is now a big maritime lawyer. He went to did the, the Wolves Ash. Um, course down here, the maritime course, and now he's a big shot in the city. Another one runs his own scaffolding business. So it's, um, you know, he does breed a, a really successful type of graduate from here. Um, and they're mates for life, which is nice. So it's all part of that university uh, making friends. The second bit is, uh, which sort of friends segues into it, is the non academic side. So I'm a massive rugby guy, and I love playing rugby. And I came along uh, first day, and uh, freshers week came in, and uh, tried to find a rugby stand. And the guys were like, "Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah." And they said, "40 quid equals 40 mates." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "When you pay 40 quid to join the rugby team, you'll have 40 mates on your side for the rest of your university career." 
and it was true. Those were the guys that we used to go out with. We used to go and blood, sweat, and tears on a rugby pitch. But you could go out on a Wednesday night to, uh, you know, I think it's Oceana's now. It was iPhone and Diva when I was doing it, or Chaos, which I think has been converted to something else now. But those are the, the bars and the nightclubs that we used to go to. It was just great fun. We all used to meet up around people's houses and go out afterwards and just enjoy each other's company. But you would also learn the management of a rugby team. So we've all been captains of our little school rugby teams and stuff, but I've never had to manage a rugby team. I've never had to phone people around to make sure they're there. I've never had to organise who's got driver's licence in part of our team so we can get to places and use the minibuses that the uh, university here supply. We've never had to actually get the finances right. So we managed our own finances. We have a treasurer. We have a social committee. Social committee was a great job. Uh, we had um, trainers, we had to employ a coach. And we all did that, that was all done for us before. But you come to university and you're given those jobs and those responsibilities. And we really leant into that and enjoyed it because we were masters of our own destiny. Now, it never always went to plan. You know, we used to sort of turn up and there'd be no coach because the guy who was trying to organize it had gone out the night before and forgotten. Uh, probably spent all the money with the coach somewhere. <laughs> and, um, but it did mean that you actually had to then innovate and try and find your own transport or, bet or whatever it would be. So it was good. So you sort of grew up, the leadership, the friends that you had from there. But of course, we, there is a little bit of learning and education involved <laughs> in university. Um, so <laughs> it's not all normal education. And I chose business entrepreneurship. So I always knew that I wanted to be in business. And I came out of college and around about that sort of 17, 18, you're, I just didn't feel right to be able to go set up a business. I was a bit young, um, I just needed to have a little bit more rounding, a bit more um, inspiration as well from other places. And um, decided on this course. It was the first time it was ever run in business entrepreneurship. And uh, so I signed up for it and came along and it taught me about finance for small business, setting up a small business, understanding management structures for small businesses, and marketing for small businesses. So it was really, really important, and um, I used to make sure that we always were in those lectures and, and really, really devoured the content because it was really, it, you know, there was a cause behind it as opposed to, you know, other courses that wouldn't have called or had the calling for me. So that was the most important bit. I also really loved this place because it gave me so much support. So I'm massively dyslexic, and I came to this um, university with those sort of learning difficulties. But they came and really supported me through that. They helped me record lectures so I could listen to them back. I had more time in exams. I had a dedicated learning area that I could go and talk to a tutor and, and give me more one-on-one -on -one stuff. And that's all that happened here. It was far better than college um, here, than the actual support that I gave me. And what that did, it inspired me to um, write my final thesis. So my final thesis was, is there a link between entrepreneurship and dyslexia? And the concept was that you spent so much of your time thinking outside the box because inside the box is a parameters of um, you know, exams and mathematics and that sort of thing. But if you could sort of get outside and do a bit of left field thinking, um, that got me through education and that's what bred this sort of question everything entrepreneurial side of me. And that's how I linked it. You know, Branson and Sugar and those sort of guys are renowned, Anita Roddick are renowned dyslexics. Um, and, uh, and so I'd be able to link it that way. So that was another thing that worked really well. I graduated, uh, I got a first for that dissertation, I sort of got two twos in my exam, so they came together for a two one, and uh, I was really, really pleased with that. Graduated, went, in, went out and decided, right, I'm now gonna go follow through in all the things that I've been learning. So I went with a sketchbook to India and China with um, concepts that I've been drawing down. So they were like three-player chess boards and like wacky photo frames and those sort of things. Got, uh, walked up and down the trade show halls of Guangzhou and Shenzhen and Guangzhou um, and found supplier and said, could you make this for me? And they go, yeah, why not? So they made it, they produced my designs, I had little photo frames, little knickknacks and what have you. Shipped them over on a big storage container to the UK, put them into warehousing, got out some samples into a nice wheelie case, a little bit like the wheelie case I walk around on the apprentice all the time, hoping that I'm not going to actually need if I get fired. Um, and so they walk around the conference and then go into a shop like this and say, right, I've got these samples and let me just talk you through these samples. And Cara, supportive as ever, said, You were a little bit like Del Boy Trotter, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you the Tatman. 
So I would name the tax man. I'd be touting my tax all over town. So it's very lovely of you, Cara. I've always supported you. <laughs> but I soon segued out and graduated from tax man into um, digital marketing. And, and marketing is where we're always at. Tim and I, so my brother and I, built the website for our samples. And then people came to us and say, you guys are really good at building websites. Could you help me with mine? And we grew our marketing business from there. Um, we also have a photography and audio business, um, which takes professional photography or business people. And I've got an oil distribution business, uh, which is a slightly segue, but it's all online generated oil inquiries for people that need heating oil for their homes is my third business. And then my final business is York Consulting, which is a property business, which I started here uh, when I was at Southampton. And my part-time job was at Austin & Wyatt on the side of London Road, which is an estate agent. And I was a Saturday and Sunday boy, which is brilliant, by the way, if you guys want to save on your photocopy of your dissertation. And what happened then is that they were giving away 100% mortgages. Um, so um, I think the parents in here would understand what that means, but the kids here have got a chance. Um, but 100% mortgages were brilliant. So I could get, as a student, a 100% mortgage. I bought my student house. I divided it into four rooms. I rented three of the rooms. It paid for my accommodation. And the Austin and White paid for my um, degree. And it meant that I could actually then afford that. I brought my brothers for him, so he's got another one down there. And then actually we ended up getting one for my folks as well. So we still got three student properties there to year two, if you want to. Uh, but yeah, so we still got, so I still come down here and, and pick, you know, the odd shelf. Uh, if anybody watched the handyman task, uh, you'll know that I'm not that good at that either. Uh, at least I won't use McGinn, who was one of the guys. But we've all done a mistake, didn't I? Oh, okay. um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, so I still, so that's the other bit. So um, I'm still massively tied to Southampton. But what does all that mean? Is that I was able, with my brother um, managing those businesses, to apply for The Apprentice, and uh, I've now, um, well, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have won seven out of eight tasks so far, and uh, we're motoring through to next week. So if you want a little insight, I'm the project manager next week. Yeah. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so that's where we are. Um, one, just coming back to Southampton, I obviously, you know, I met my wife here, um, I have mates from here, I had a great education here, um, I got really looked after here and uh, these really are the best years of your life so make sure you make the right decision. The next three years, four years, however long your business will be, you will just love, you really will do and uh, uh, you won't go far wrong choosing this place. So hope you enjoy the rest of your day, thank you very much for listening.